We are barely one quarter of the way through 2022 and already I'm starting to hear people say things like this figure could be the figure of the year. Come on. Could that possibly be true? Atticus Doom is in the Dorkland. A brand new character to the Rumbled Society, Atticus Doom. Clearly a labor of love by somebody who's very much into Lovecraft and the occult and sort of eldritch horror type storytelling. I think Mez wrote the comic, so I'm kind of thinking he may have designed the character himself, Atticus Doom. It's very cool. It's got this like sort of voodoo skull with the turban and some fun little secrets underneath the turban. It's got a scarf over here that actually came on the figure. I kind of thought that would be separate, and I haven't removed it yet because I'm afraid I won't be able to get it back in the right way, so I wanted to show it like this before I remove it. I'll remove the coat after and everything else as well. Um, the hand on this side has the eyeball on it and then his left hand's sort of normal But this is the one that swaps into all the different like powered up hands And we got a little belt buckle going on here in the pants Just very nicely done the boots come up to you know Like a short boot type thing with a ball peg in there nice stitching details with the buckle on the wrist and there's posing wires throughout the whole trench coat very cool. And now let's see how it looks with a few other figures. For height, Atticus is just slightly over six inches tall, which I think puts him on the shorter end of typical Mezcos. Here's Atticus next to a couple other Rumble figures. On the left is the Golden Dragon Gomez. On the right is Doc Nocturnal. And I'm going to guess that he and Doc Nocturnal are probably on the same body. And here he is next to a couple licensed figures. We have Hellboy on the left and Conan on the right. Here he is next to a couple other familiar lines. Super 7, Thulsa Doom on the left and the Mafex Batman Dark Knight Returns on the right. And finally, we have a couple skeletons to compare to. On the left, we have the Mythic Legion's Scaphoid. And on the right, we have the Storm Collectibles Golden Axe Skeleton. Okay, next up, let's take a look at all his stuff. This guy comes with a ton, and some of it is already on him. So we're starting off with the turban here, and that comes right off like this. And you can get a little close-up of the turban. This piece, I don't think it pegs. I think it's glued on there. But that thing has a name. It is called the Leviathan Particle. Next up, we have his brain. And this is probably the weirdest, grossest part of the figure. You pull his turban off and it's just an exposed brain with an eyeball in there, which is known as the Philosopher's Oculus. And you can actually remove the brain. Just pops right out like that. And then the Philosopher's Oculus punches out. You can just pop that out. And you can pop that brain right back on there. Now, obviously, you've got the hole, but you could just put the turban back on. And then you can take the Oculus and you could actually stick it in there for his eyeball, which it actually it's kind of tricky to get it lined up. But once you do, it essentially looks like this. Next up, he comes with this smoke effect. It's a translucent gray or, or sort of translucent black piece. And I'm not entirely sure how it's supposed to go on him, but let's see here. It's also go around his neck. Like it says to take the head off and then put this in, I guess like this, so that it kind of looks like he's shrouded in smoke. Next up for hands, the sides are so different that I'll just walk through the right hands and then I'll walk through the left hand. So the first right hand is the fist with the eye on there. The next hand is sort of a clawing, grasping hand. And that actually is used on one of the accessories that we'll get to in a little bit. And then we have the opening gesturing hand. Maybe it's a spell casting hand. For right hands, he starts off with the fist over here. Then we've got an opening gesturing spell casting hand. Next up, a pretty typical looking gripping hand for the various accessories. This hand is what's known as the cindered palm. This is super cool. And this actually has an effect piece that goes on to it right here. You sort of weave the fingers in almost like a glove. And here's how it looks sort of like attached to the effect piece. Next up, we've got the Medusa hand, which is fingers of serpents. That's about as creepy as it gets. Here he is with a nebulous claw, which is painted very well with this lobster claw look. And it does have some articulation here. And then next up, we've got the Cthulhu Fraction, which has two different versions. This sort of wired version, you can kind of like bend a little bit, nothing too crazy. But this thing's long. I mean, it's, you know, it's as long as the figure itself. And then we've got the other version of the Cthulhu Fraction, which is just a posed version of it. And then another cool thing are these two pieces that you can use to make it look like he's teleporting his hand through a magical effect. And so you can take this piece up here 
and stick another one on it like this. And the only thing with this is the stand is really long and there's no articulation point at the bottom. So the tricky thing is like you have to either have it up or you can put it into a sideways position and then swing this up. But what happens is it doesn't balance. So, you know, you're gonna have some tricky posing situations going on with, with it. You'll either have to weigh it down or find some other solution. He comes with these two arm stands. There's like a clamp to go on his arm here and then a ball joint underneath it. Then you have a hinge with a peg hole right on this end. That can pop onto his arm just like this. And you get a couple different magic effects. Here's the one that seems like it's summoning Cthulhu perhaps. Uh, and you can see how it kind of looks from there. But from the front, it looks pretty sweet. And then he's also got this one that looks almost like incantations. And then there's this little piece here that you can use to stick the book on as if he's casting from the spell book right here. And this is not a great solution. Like it doesn't really get on there very well. That's about the best I can do. You can open the book up, but you gotta kinda fiddle with the pages to get them splayed out a little bit more than that. One of my favorite accessories is this shillelagh with a goblin head on it. The details are amazing. And he does have a specific hand for gripping the head of that. Piece. And the other gripping hand on his left, you can use it to hold it from the shaft of the shillelagh. Quite possibly the coolest accessory on this figure is the alternate Cthulhu head sculpt. And that thing is amazing. Look at that. Paintwork is awesome. Very cool look. And just adds a lot. Like it almost makes me wish I'd bought more than one of these figures so that I could display it both ways. Finally, he comes with a typical stand and flight arm. And this definitely feels like artwork that would be inspired by Mike Mignola, the creator of Hellboy. It just has that feel to it. I almost thought maybe it was, but I didn't see any credits from Mike Mignola. So it's probably just inspired by, but seems fitting to me. And before we get into articulation, I'm going to take a few things off so you can see how he looks with some things removed. So Let's get into the coat here. So there's the coat removed, and then I'll just remove the scarf here, see how this goes. There's definitely, I can feel a wire in there. And I hesitated to do this, but I'm gonna do it for the sake of the video and get this thing out. Okay, so let's see. So yeah, the scarf definitely has a wire, and for the sake of kind of keeping track of it, it's, uh, let's see here. So it's lifted up through and then down this way in just a regular knot, basically. And so we can pull that through, maybe. Yeah, pull that through, and there we have it. And then so to tie it back up, just a regular knot up through, and then back down, and then you have room for the head to go in there, and find a way to tuck that back into the shirt. That shouldn't be too bad. I think I'll be able to get that back in there. Okay, there's how he looks with the coat off and the scarf removed. So looks pretty cool. Finally, for articulation, we've got lots of motion in the head. He can look way down and way up, side to side. These Rumble Society bodies, both the smaller body of Atticus that's shared with Doc Nocturnal and the larger Gomez bodies are just really great articulation. Shoulders can swing up well past the T position and then they can swing all the way around. There's a butterfly joint at the shoulder. You can twist the bicep. And these are very small limbs, so definitely want to be careful and be gentle when you're articulating. Double jointed elbow, you can twist the wrist, and it's also got a hinge that rotates around. There's articulation in the upper torso, and then there's articulation at the waist. And so he can crunch forward a little bit. He can crunch backwards. He can twist. He can go side to side. Lots of great motion in the chest. Kicks forward, just about up to 90 degrees can kick back a little bit. You can twist at the thigh. He can go out into the splits about this far. Double jointed knee. Earlier I mentioned the boot, nice rocker at the boot, but it's, you know, it's, it kind of sits a little bit high there. So, and then you can twist as well. So a lot of great articulation. Pretty much not surprised though, you know, Mezco um, Rumble Society figures tend to have great movement. I think that pretty much does it. It also came with a comic book. I'm not gonna get into this right now. Um, and the stuff on the back already went up for sale. We had the Atticus do magical expansion pack and then the skulls that went up uh, already for sale. And just a quick flip through the book. Great stuff, awesome figure, and I guess I pretty much understand why people are kind of already talking figure of the year level with this thing. I, I could see that happening. Of course, there are still three quarters of the year left for this figure to be dethroned, but 
right now as it stands, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't put this at least in the top three of my 2022 list so far. Thanks for watching my video. If you like my content, please check out this playlist right here. And until next time, may the force be with you.